Good evening everyone, this is Mike AE0MT with a little demo video. Uh, I've had a couple people ask me just exactly what PWM or pulse width modulation is, so I thought I would show you real quick here on an Arduino. This is an, uh, an OSEP Arduino clone, essentially it's the same thing as a regular Arduino Uno. I've got a rather messy breadboard here. The primary reason the breadboard is messy is because I'm also driving this LCD screen off the breadboard. I have my uh, multi or my oscilloscope probes hooked up to the bread to the board, and those are hooked up to the analog outputs, as is the single LED here, and the uh, the oscilloscope goes here to my Rigel oscilloscope. Let me see if I can get this to focus a little bit better. There we go. Rigel oscilloscope showing uh, showing channel one and channel two. Channel one is hooked directly up to that LED, showing the pulse width modulation, and channel two is hooked up to a capacitor that you can kind of hardly see right up in here. And that capacitor has a really big resistor on it, really high value resistor, so it goes pretty slow to charge. But the reason I have that on there is to show you what would happen if you were to average out all those spikes. So what we see on the LCD here are two numbers. Uh, the first number is the actual uh, input, and I didn't trail off my zero, so you'll have to bear with me on that. The actual, uh, I'm sorry, the first number is the output of PWM. The second number is the input from the uh, from the potentiometer. And so what we're seeing, I'm sorry, the other way around. So what we're seeing here is that an input of 670 gives us a output of 169. That's simply just a four time dividing. And so the input here is controlled by a, a little potentiometer and so as I turn this potentiometer what we're doing is we're telling the input of the Arduino here's this number divide that by four and write that to the output and so what we see is as we are moving this potentiometer we're seeing the numbers go up and down and we're also seeing this LED go brighter and dimmer now I don't think the phone's going to wig out too much about it no nope, it should go up and down so just like that you see so it's Pulse width modulation can be very, very good to dim LEDs, and that's how most of them are, are working. You can see the numbers here. Uh, again, forgive the uh, the trailing zero is not writing off. Primarily just focus on the top number. Know that it's divided by four to write the output. There you go as an example. Um, so, onto the OSCO. What does this actually look like? Well, when the signal is at zero, when it's not outputting anything, the OSCO looks, as you would expect, at basically zero. Now remember I have that blue line is on channel two that's hooked up to the capacitor it floats really long because it's a really high value capacitor and a, and a really high value resistor so it's it's a very very long over time average just to get the idea as I turn up the pulse width modulation or turn up the potentiometer you'll see we've got a couple spikes here and as I continue to increase it the frequency between those spikes does not change. What changes is the duration of the on time in relation to the off time. Now if we set this somewhere about half, and actually if we come down here to the screen we'll see it's at 560. Well half would be 512. Let's turn it down just a little bit more. Well we'll call that good enough. 513, 514. That sounds like half to me. Output of 128. Perfect. We take a look at our O scope, we'll see that it's a almost perfect square wave right now. And that perfect square wave has got half of its time on and half of its time off. Our V max right now is 4.8. We're still running off an L uh, USB, so there's going to be a little bit of that. Um, and our voltage is averaging out pretty pretty high. And like I said, normally if there was a much higher res value resistor, it wouldn't be going quite so high. Uh, it would drop uh, drop off much quicker, but the idea here is that you can see that as we increase our number, we're increasing the ratio of on time to off time, changing that sawtooth. And then, if you were to imagine the blue line being a more accurate average, if there was a little bit of a load up there, you would see that do just exactly that. As we increase our on time, the average goes with it. So what you can do here is that you can take this pulse with pulse pulse I'm sorry with modulation and feed that through a transistor directly to a motor and pulse the power to the motor that's fine. You can feed that to a uh, 
uh, LED, that's fine. Your eyes won't be able to see that at all either. Uh, but as you're outputting it to something else, if you want to get an analog voltage, if you filter this like this, you can see that pulse width modulation can give you an actual analog voltage. Now again, I didn't build a very good filter, I just happened to throw some parts on the bench together, but you can get the idea and you can see that it is doing just exactly that. Uh, when it's that low, it stays pretty darn low. Uh, when I increase my pulse width modulation to maximum, it's, uh, it's climbing pretty quick. So that's pulse width modulation output from an Arduino as uh, demonstrated by a Rigel scope. Uh, sorry for the shaky video here, used to shooting with a cell phone. Uh, but there you go, that's pulse width modulation. So for anyone who wanted to see what it looks like as you're dimming and brightening an LED, this is exactly what you're changing. You're not changing the frequency of the pulses, you're changing the duration of the on time as it relates to the off time. So, very good. That, uh, that's a short little demo video. Hope this helps. Hope you enjoy this. This is Mike, AE0MT. Thank you.